hello guys welcome back to my channel my name is nk and today in this video we are going to drop your pattern for this beautiful ankara dress don't forget to like share and subscribe if you're new to this channel don't forget to subscribe so with that being said let's get into the video placing the tape on the top line nine and a half inches for the bust point 13 inches for the under bust and 16 inches for the half length remember you can use your basic bodice pattern for this tutorial so the bust starts on the waist that has the width of 1.5 inches each from the top of the line i'll mark six and a half inches downwards across the line this is where the off shoulder will start from so i'll just go ahead and connect the two points together with a straight line moving up to the shoulder i'll find the midpoint then i'll connect this midpoint to the bust point with a straight line Before I complete the bodies, I want to first of all finish up the skirt part. Alright, so moving down to the rest of the gown, I'm going to mark the full length of the dress. So the full length of the dress I'm working with is 34 and a half inches. So I'll mark the point across the papers and with the ruler I'll connect the two points together with a straight line. After that I'll go ahead and mark the hip line. So from the waist line down to the hip line. I'll mark it um, one quarter inches, so I'm marking that across the paper of which I will use my ruler to draw a straight line across the two points. So you can go ahead and do the same for yours. Next, I will mark quarter of the hip measurement on this line. The hip measurement I'm working with is 39 inches and quarter of 39 inches is 9.75, so which I just marked here. Next, I'll connect this point on the hip to the waistline using a curve line. Remember the quarter of hip measurement I marked on the hip line. I'll go ahead and minus one inch from this measurement, then mark it on the hemline. So what I'm having is 8.75 inches. I'll go ahead and draw a straight line connecting this point at the hemline to the hip line. Next, I'm going to extend the waist dart at the bodies down to the skirt part. So I'll go ahead and measure the width of the dart, which I have here as 1.5. Then I'll mark the midpoint. So I'll measure from the center point to that midpoint. Then I'll go down and mark that point. I'm going to connect these two points together with a dotted line. Alright, so from the waist, I'll measure 5 inches for the length of the dart. So I'll just go ahead and cut off the excess paper that I don't need. Then I'll cut off the bodies from the skirt. Then I'll go ahead and cut out this skirt part. So this is what I have for the front part. Then I'll go ahead and finish up the bodies. So the first thing I'm going to do is to cover up this bust that. Alright, so this is what I have after covering it up. So the next thing I'll do is to measure half an inch on the under bust, on both sides of the under bust line. So this new point I made on the under bust, I'm going to connect it to the bust point with a curve. I'll do the same thing on the other side as well. Then from this point also, I'm going to connect it with a straight line down to the waistline. Now, if you noticed, you see that I raised the initial line I drew at the chest. This is because I want to take it up higher a bit to avoid showing the cleavage. The initial measurement I used was 6.5 inches, and now I marked 5.75 inches from the top line. On this tiny line that I just drew, I will mark 0.25 inch on the left because the distance from that line to the armhole is very small. Then I will mark 0.75 inches on the right, making it a total of 1 inch. After that, I'm going to connect these two points down to the bust point with a curve line. I'll use 5 inches as the width of the chest line. Then I'll go ahead and measure the distance from the center front to the first dart leg. 
which I'm having here as three and a half inches, which is now up to five inches. So from the second that leg, I'll place that three and a half inches and then mark five inches along that line. Next, I'll draw a curve connecting this new point down to the armhole. If you notice, you see that I widen up the armhole. So what I did was I measured 0.75 inches from the armhole line downwards. So now I just connected it to create a new armhole curve. Alright, so I'll go ahead and place my zip at the top line and mark 5.75 inches. Then with this vertical line, I'll connect it to the first dart leg, like so. Alright, having done that, I'll go ahead and start cutting out the pattern. Alright, so this is what the front pattern looks like. So the next thing I'm going to do is to make sure that from the bust point up to the chest line that the both pattern pieces are the same. Alright, for the back, I have the basic bodice pattern for the back piece. So what I'm doing here is to measure the full length of the dress, which is that four and a half inches, just like I did for the front pattern. Next, I'll draw a straight line for the hemline. Just like I did for the front pattern, I'm going to mark the hip line. So from the waistline downwards, I'll mark 8.25 inches for the hip line. Then I'll go ahead and connect the two points together with a straight line. Now on this line, I'm going to mark 9.75 inches, which is quarter of the hip measurement. So after that, I'll move down to the hemline and I'll mark 8.75 inches. So remember, I removed one inches from quarter of the hip measurement, which is how I got this 8.75 inches. Then go ahead and connect these points together with a straight line. Moving up to the waistline at the center back, I'm going to mark half an inch out, which I'm going to replace here at the side. Now I'm going to connect this new point down to the hip line with a curve line, then also connect it upwards to the armhole line with a straight line. Now remember this half an inch I removed from the center back, I'm going to connect this point upwards and downwards with a straight line. So what I'm doing now, I didn't really capture it very well with the camera, so but I'm going to try and explain it as easy as possible. So from the shoulder down to the armhole line, I found the midpoint which I just marked. So I'm connecting that line from the hip line to this point I just marked. Then after that, on the waistline, I'm going to measure down 5 inches and mark the point. Then I'll use my ruler to connect that point to the waistline. Alright, so I'm going to extend the dart downwards. So I'll find the midpoint of the dart and with a dotted line, I marked a line downwards. So on this line, I'll mark 5 inches, which is the length of the dart, just like I did for the front pattern. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is to extend this dart upwards towards the shoulder. So from the shoulder to the armhole, I found the midpoint which I just marked as four and a half inches. So I'm going to use my ruler to draw a straight line across this four and a half inches. Next, I'm going to take the measurement from the center back to the tip of the dart which I just measured here and I'm having 4.25 inches. So upwards on that dotted line, I'm going to mark that 4.25 inches there. Now I'm going to draw a new dart. So from that point I just made, I'm going to draw a straight line connecting from that point down to the dart leg. I'll also do the same thing for the other side as well. I just grabbed the front pattern piece which I'm going to use to draw the armhole curve for the back pattern piece. So I'm just placing it for the both of them to align at the waistline. Alright, so here I'm just marking the point. I'll also go ahead and mark the point up so that I can draw the curve for the back pattern. Now on that point I make upwards, I'm going to come down by quarter of an inch. 
but before I draw in the armhole line so I'm just folding this dart in so next thing I'll use my ruler from this new point I made I'll draw a curve line connecting it down next I'm going to cut out the pattern pieces Alright, so there's something I forgot to do. I'm supposed to take in the back width. So I just mark on this curve line 0.75 inch. So from this 0.75 inch, I'm going to connect it with a curve down to this new armhole line. Now here is what the whole pattern looks like. Now this paper is now for the sleeve. As you can see, I've drawn a straight line on the top and by the side. So from the top line, I'll measure 6 inches and then down, I'll measure 22 inches. 22 inches is from the top of the shoulder down to the wrist. I'll also mark the elbow line, which I'm marking here as 12 inches from the top line. So after this, I'll use ruler and connect all this point together with a straight line. So this 6 inches I marked here is actually for the cap height. Remember that this sleeve is an off shoulder, so I'm marking out 3 inches out. So with my ruler, I'll connect the point with a straight line. There are so many lines already on this paper, I hope you don't get confused. So on this armhole line, I marked 6.5 inches, which is the width of the sleeve. Then at the elbow, I marked 6.5 inches as well. So here is the back pattern, which I'm going to take the back weight measurement. Even though that this back pattern is curved, but I'm going to measure it as a straight line. So you can see where I place my tape. So I'm taking this measurement as a straight line and if I line it, what I have is 6 inches. Now I'm going also going to do the same thing for the front pattern as well. So placing the tape on the center front, then I'll measure here what I am having here is 5 inches. So here at the top of the sleeve length, I'll mark 5 inches. I'll quickly show how I got this 5 inches on the screen. On the armhole line, I'll mark half an inch. This is for ease. So I'll use my ruler and create the curve, connecting these two points together. Alright, so remember that this line up here is where I cut off for the off shoulder. So remember that this leaf is going to have 3 steps of lay and then one ruffle at the top, making it 4 different steps. So this total length I have of 22, I'm going to divide it by 4, so which what I cut is 5 and a half inches. So I'm not going to make use of this 5 and a half inches because I want the full length of the flay for each of the steps to be 7 inches. So I'm going to mark 7 inches. So this is where the first step of the flay will start from, from these 7 inches I marked out. So I'll use my ruler and connect the line together. So I'm going to cut this part off. Alright. So from the ammo, I'm going to draw a straight line downwards which connects and passes through the elbow point. Before I go ahead and finish cutting out this sleeve pattern, I'm going to add one inch by the side as sewing allowance. Now 
and this is what the sleeve pattern looks like so i have this fabric which i'm going to use to cut the flay for the sleeve now as you can see it's folded into four all right so i want to cut like two different flay pattern at once so i'll go ahead and fold it remember that when i'm done cutting this i'll have two different flay patterns so from the edge i'll mark two inches all around So placing my tape on this curve line, I'll mark 7 inches which I'm going to use as the full length of the flay, then an extra half an inch for joining the flay to the sleeve, then an extra half an inch for folding this, the flay, that's for helming it, making it an, a total of 8.25 inches which I'm marking all round. As you can see, I cut two different flay at once. So I'll go ahead and use this particular one to cut out more flay because this one won't be enough. So I also cut another flay pattern from this fabric as you can see this is the second fabric I'm going to use for the sleeve because this one won't be enough and they both look alike you won't really notice that they are two different fabrics so this is how I'm placing them step by step so guys this is the end of this tutorial thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video bye